No one actually sits down and plans to mess up their lives. You know, I, I don't know of anyone who one day decided to sit down on the desk and go, you know what, these are five ways that I'm going to mess up my life. It doesn't exist. But the other side of the equation is that very few of us plan not to. That's why I want to talk to you about decisions. If you don't know the past or don't study the past, you're doomed to repeat it. If you don't study history, you are doomed to repeat it. So this is why I believe making good choices and having a framework, and I keep insisting on the word framework is important. You have to have a strategy for your choices. And that's where this book comes from. A long time ago, long, 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 long time ago, because I'm 40 now and I think I read this book when I was 19. So it's amazing that I still remember. I use this book for quite a lot of things that I do. Just yesterday, I'm recording this video in May 2024. Just yesterday, I was having a conversation with a young guy, 18 years old, and I was telling him, bro, this is how you make good decisions. This is how you frame your choices. And I share with him these three questions. I cannot wait to get to the third one, but I have to go one by one with you. So question number one, no further ado, the book's name is Ask It, or as my good friend Jordan says, Ask It, because we're in Australia. We're in Australia, man. So we gotta say, Ask It. But you know, I, I can't force myself to do this. So let's, let's rewind it. The book is called Ask It by Andy Stanley. I, I love a lot of things that he's done. And this book has been really crucial in my life. And in the book, it's got a lot of stuff. I really recommend you read it. He, he talks about a, a few different things when it comes to choices, shares a little bit about his life. But three questions are the, you know, the main topic of the book. The first question is, when you're about to make a decision, be it for work, family, finances, uh, marriage, spiritual decisions, whatever decision you're about to make, you need to ask yourself these three questions, okay? And the questions are, because you, you, I've said this so many times, so I'm gonna repeat it. The secret of wisdom in life is not knowing all the answers, but knowing what questions to ask. If you know what questions to ask, you'll be all right. So this is why I'm very big on questions. So question number one in the book, he says this, when you're about to make a decision, ask yourself this question. In light of your past experiences, what is the wisest thing for you to do? And notice that I'm not, I'm not saying what's the best thing for you to do because sometimes the best thing is not the wisest thing. Wisdom is on the multitude of counselors. You gotta ask a lot of people the same question. And you might get different answers, different perspectives, and this is good. This is gonna open your mind. You have, in our days, I feel like we have to learn how to think, not what you think. The media tells us what you think, but I believe that in our days, we have to learn how to think. It's a different science, it's a different art. So when you ask yourself the question, in, in light of your past experiences, what is the wisest thing for you to do? You ask a few people around you, ask your parents, ask more experienced people, and ask yourself that question. That will help you to create an exercise in your mind that will push you to think in retrospect. Ooh, that's a big word, retrospect. You know, at the end of the year, those TV channels, they will have, you know, 2024 20, in retrospect. What happened? You know, this happened and that happened. That was amazing. That was an insane year. You remember those things? So retrospective is, is, is hindsight. We recently had a video on our channel about hindsight, the importance of hindsight experience. So when you look back in your own life, maybe you're 40 like myself, maybe you're 50 and you're watching this video and you're wondering, what is in it for me? Well, when you look back when you were 20, whatever happened there and the consequences of whatever happened there are probably a result of your choices. Now, I get it. A lot of people are handed a bad hand and they have to play with it. Circumstances could change. We recently had a, a big catastrophe all over the world. Morocco had floodings, Brazil had floodings, tornadoes in America. So I get it. People got hit by all sorts of things and it's, it's sad. But in general, if all things are equal, you are a result of your choices. So if you look back 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, six months ago, in light of my past experiences, whatever I felt, whatever I went through, what's the wisest thing for me to do? If you do that and you come up with an option, maybe you, you're moving cities because of a job and you've done that before and you know how it worked out. So you go, you know, when I did this, X, Y, and Z happened and I'm not really happy with that. But then you leave that answer there, isolate that question. Question number one, in light of my past experiences, what is the wisest thing for me to do? Then you move on to the question number two. Again, isolate question number two 
answer it for itself, and then you combine the results. Question number two is this. In light of my present circumstances, what is the wisest thing for me to do? Present circumstances, whatever is happening to you right now. Maybe you are facing a trouble in your marriage and every day is a different discussion. Every day is a different argument. The kids are not obeying. There's something wrong with marriage. And you can't look back because you've been married maybe for three years, five years. There's not much of a history there. And you can't really look forward because you probably get what I'm going with this. So right here, right now, you look around and, and you, you think, you, you ask yourself, when I fight, when I argue, what's the, what's the immediate result? The kids look at it. What, what does that cause in the kids' mind? What does that cause in your day? When you go to work with that weight of having fought in the morning, what does that cause in your mind? Do you perform well? Or are you that genius that you can separate personal life and work life? Most of us can't. So in light of your present circumstances, maybe, you know, let me be honest. A lot of us are going through the same thing financially. Maybe you're broke. Maybe, maybe you got nothing in the bank. Maybe you're struggling to pay rent. In light of your present experiences, your present circumstances, what is the wisest thing for you to do? A lot of people think when they're, when they're struggling financially, I need to find another job. And they don't realize that when they find another job, they're just going to swap six for half a dozen. It's the same thing. You're going to wait 30 days to get paid, or you're going to wait a week to get paid, and the amount you're going to get paid is not really going to be more than enough. So you got to find different, you got to find alternatives. It's not about switching. It's about thinking really deeply about what the root of the problem is and going into the root of the problem, not the effect, but the root of the problem. There's a difference between, between a Band-Aid and a surgery. There's a difference. And you, when it comes to decisions, we have to be surgical. We, we have to cut deep. We have to find out the root of the problem. So here are the main two questions, past and present. Now, this channel really normally attracts intelligent people. So I think you know where we're going with this, right? This is, mm, you know, mm, mm, mm. this is where we're going, future. But before we go there, let me share something with you. Uh, you know that a lot of people that watch this channel, they actually don't subscribe to the channel. The video just pops up, it's how the algorithm works. So I'd love to recommend you subscribe to the channel. Why? Because I wanna build an audience? No, I don't wanna build an audience. I wanna form a community. But when you subscribe, you're telling the big dogs in the media that you wanna watch this thing, because you do. You gotta be honest with me, this is really good, isn't it? <laughs> I gotta, I gotta say I love myself, I love what I do. <laughs> but all that aside, you gotta subscribe to the channel because there's a lot of things that we publish that you might not see. And when you subscribe, you get to participate with this, you get to be part of this. So subscribe to the channel right here and then you can be involved in the things that are happening. But moving along, third question, all right? We got the first question about the past, the second question about the future, or the second question about the present, and then obviously you already know the third question about the future. But before I ask you the question about the future, Here's something for you to meditate upon. Are you ready to follow up with the answers for your questions? You, you really gotta ask yourself a question because there's no point in doing this exercise if the answer is X and you go, mm, I don't like the answer, I'm not gonna do it. That's a waste of your time, it's a waste of my time. So the deal is embrace change, brace yourself, buckle up and get ready to act upon what you decide. Now here's the third question. In light of your future hopes and dreams, what is the wisest, not the best, the wisest thing for you to do? I remember when I was young, um, I had finished my university, I had my first degree in marketing, and I was about to get a job, and I said, you know what, this is not gonna work. And again, I was 19 years old. I had no past to look upon, like you're a teenager, you know nothing, so what, what am I gonna analyze there? All of my decisions were bad, let's just say that. All my choices were bad when I was a teenager. In my present, I was really stuck. I was stuck on a job that I would make a very minimum amount of money. I thought I knew better, and I thought I had more value to add to the table. So then I made a decision. My wife and I, we got married really early. My wife and I decided to leave the country. We said, you know what? We don't want to inherit anything. We want to build our own thing. So we decided to leave the country, and we moved to New Zealand. How did we make that decision? We asked ourselves, what do we want for the future? In light of my future hopes and dreams, I wanted to get involved in church. I wanted to be in a place where people speak English. I wanted to get out of a corrupt country. I wanted to raise my family on a safe country. I, I wanted to have access to things. You know, I never, you know, back then, yes, we, we, all, we all dream about having money and all of that, but I just, I feel like I just wanted to have access. 
So we had hopes and we had dreams. And when that was made clear to me, when we wrote down on a piece of paper, we said, well, clearly we can't stay in Brazil. Where do we go? Then we asked a few people around. We asked for opinions and choices. People gave us a few choices, Canada, America, New Zealand. And I was like, what part of America is New Zealand? And they showed me, no, it's this little dot here on the map. And I was like, that sounds very far. That looks very far. And they said, oh, it's the furthest you can go. And it's like, that's where I'm going. And then we went to New Zealand. Funny story, you probably don't know this, but when I looked on the map and we, not zoomed in, but because at the time there was no digital thing, but when we looked at the map, there was a city in New Zealand called Christchurch. And I had recently given my life to Jesus. So Christchurch, I, I couldn't speak English, but I saw Christ and I saw church and I asked, is this like the church of Christ? Is that what it means? And they said, yes. So I said, that's the decision. I'm going there based on that decision. Funny fact, never stepped foot in Christchurch, but that was what moved us to go to New Zealand. Uh, we had nothing to our name, so there was an easy decision to make because I was young. But when you get to my age, for example, and then you have kids and a lot of things have to be, you know, uh, weighed in the equation and other people might suffer the consequences of your choices, you have to think really carefully about what you're going to do, be it at work, family, spiritually, whatever it is. So in light of your future hopes and dreams, what is the wisest thing for you to do? Now, here's the trick of this exercise, and I'm going to finish with this. All of these questions, they are not good at all on their own. For the exercise, you have to isolate the questions, get the answers, tabulate, put it on a spreadsheet, whatever you want to do. But on their own, they won't give you much direction. They will give you retrospective, they will give you a good perspective, and they will give you, you know, a destination, a north. The secret is when you combine the answers, you will see that if you ask yourself, in light of my past experiences, what is the wisest thing to do, and then you list three or four things, in light of my present current, or current circumstances, what's the wisest thing to do? And then you list three or four things. And in light of my future hopes and dreams, what's the wisest thing to do? When you do that, combined with maybe a few other things, personality tests and things that I've recommended here for you to do, when you do that, and then you combine these answers, it is very likely, 99% of a chance, that you will find one common denominator in an answer. You will find one common answer in all three seasons, past, present, and future. I bet my money on it, you do that. Because if you do that, that's the wisest thing for you to do. Now, why am I so adamant about the wisest thing for you to do? Because there is a book in the Bible called the book of Proverbs, written allegedly by the wisest man who ever lived on earth. You want to get wisdom? Read the book of Proverbs. It's going to be good to you. You don't have to be a Christian. You don't have to have any faith. You just read the book of Proverbs one by one. There are 31 chapters, one for each day of the month. If you read that repetitively for years, you will get wiser. In that book, it says that wisdom is shouting in the streets. Wisdom is really easy to find. The reason why we don't find wisdom is because we get distracted with the agenda. The agenda is the opposite of wisdom. Normally, if the agenda is over here, wisdom is going to be over here. So I'm, I'm, I'm imploring to you, use this exercise, past, present, and future. Ask people around, read the book of Proverbs, find wisdom, because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. And if you really do that with your life, and if you go, you know what, there's probably more to life than this. I'm about to make a good decision or a big decision. It's going to affect a lot of people. It is no harm in asking people around, in getting wiser. And <laughs> let me tell you something. It doesn't harm you to say a little prayer. Even though you don't know who you're praying for, it doesn't harm you. You just go, God, big guy up in the sky, wherever you are, you know, I need your help. Can you give me a nudge here? Like wherever, where do I go? North, south, trust me. If you ask, you know the saying, you knock, the door will be open. You ask, the question will be answered. If you do that, he's there to answer your question. And I hope, I really hope you get a lot of this exercise. This is it for now. This is it for today. Um, I, I hope you've enjoyed it and our channel is full of this stuff. Where I, I just want to add value to you and I just want to help you use these tools to improve your life all in the journey to find your purpose. And if you haven't yet, you can get a hold of my book. You just go on my website. The book is available there. There's a course that we're releasing there and you need to get in line. You need to get in line because that course is going to change your life. You can get in line. You'll be alerted. We will send you a message when the course is available. You can jump in and then you can get a lot of stuff 
on there that you won't find anywhere else. Like I said, this is really good. You won't find it anywhere else. All right, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for watching to this point. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave your comment there, and I'll see you next Friday. God bless. So it's a good day.